Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use clip art you've made and create a digital greeting card to sell on Etsy. If you'd like to learn more about ways to make passive income with my art and designs on Etsy, let me know in the comments below. So let's get started. Right now I've opened up Cordial and this is the editing software that I use to create my greeting cards and designs and then I link them through Cordial to my Etsy shop. Um, before we log in and make the design, I'm just going to show you uh, the pricing option that I chose. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the pricing option that I use. And I'm not sponsored in any way by Cordial. I just, uh, I like to use it. Um, it's, I use a $9.99 a month one, the plan. And it definitely pays for itself, at least through my Etsy shop, the amount of designs that I've used through Cordial and then link to my Etsy shop. It's just really worth it because the way that Cordial works is that you create a design on their platform and then you link it to your Etsy account. It shows up as a listing that you've created. And then when the customer purchases that listing, um, they get a link to the Cordial design and then they can edit it and print it themselves or uh, use the, the design in send it to a printing shop. So I like it because I don't have to customize the cards for the sellers in, or for the customers individually. Uh, they can customize it themselves and it's just super easy passive income. Once I create the design, it's done and then the customer can do with it as they'd like. So for new shops, I would recommend the $9.99 a month plan, um, but if you're medium-sized or a very large shop, then you'll probably want to look at the other options. And so I use it with Etsy, but you can also use it with your Shopify store or uh, WooCommerce if you have your own website. So I'm going to log in and then we're going to go to create a new design. I'm going to be making uh, an invitation today and I'll walk you through the process. I'm going to click on digital or paper item design. I'm going to name it floral, maybe a shower invite. And then we're going to do one art one artboard, I just do the front cover of the card and five by seven is a standard card size. I'm gonna press save and it's just gonna open it up for me. I'm going to upload my clip art and this is one that I uh, drew myself in Procreate, the app for iPad. And press this button here it just says that you have the rights to upload and use images so let's say you want to make a design with someone else's clip art that they've created you you just have to have the commercial rights to use those clip art items to sell and so I do because I made it myself and then it's going to upload And then it's right here. And then you can easily drag it and resize it as you'd like. But before I do that, I'm gonna actually delete that and I'm gonna work on the text first. So this is the card, this is the artboard where you're going to be making your design. And as you can see, going to go down to info and show you what these little lines are. This is showing us the bleed of the card. So let's say um, someone is sending it to a print shop. 
a lot of times they like to have a bleed there if they're printing the cards uh, individually it's going to be helpful to have that bleed but the way that I use my cards and I sell them digitally I don't I don't usually include the bleed on it when I'm creating it but when the customer can go in and edit it themselves I believe that they can put the bleed on it uh, for now I guess I'll leave it on and we can kind of take a look so I'm gonna start with Uh, I probably will use this one. And some of these texts are the, the fonts I've bought myself and have gotten the commercial licenses for them. And then I've uploaded them. So if you have any fonts that you like that you've already bought, you can upload them here and use them. Or you can use the fonts that already comes with Cordial. So a lot of them are the ones that are kind of blanked out this is you would have had to purchase one of their like premium plans for fonts on cordial which i don't think that you need to do at all they have a lot of nice uh, free fonts and then i have a few that i've bought myself and then just uploaded so i'm gonna see how this looks i want to write oop. so then you click so you grab the font you want and then you just drag it over here and then you actually edit it edit the font over here so I'm just going to type bridal shower I actually don't like I don't really want to use that font let me see I'll probably use this one oh shower this font is called angel heart and I believe this is one that I had to purchase a commercial license for and uploaded it. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of center that a bit. There we go. And I'm going to find this one. And up here I'm going to write, please, Join us for a I'll center it. When it lights up pink, that means it's centered. Please join us for a bridal shower. I'm going to add another one here. And to celebrate Mm. I'm going to put in a celebration of, and then I'm just going to center that too, and then check which one this was. It was Angel Heart. Go back. And now I'm going to add a this is just an example name so that when you upload uh, the mock-up photos onto Etsy, um, they can kind of have an idea of where the name goes and what it looks like. I'm just going to put uh, maybe like Jennifer Jones. So this is just a made-up name just so that they can have an idea of what it looks like. And I need this too. I want it there. I don't really like, I'll probably have to adjust the sizes later on. And then the last thing you want to do, so you want to have text showing what the card is going to be for. So this is for a bridal shower. You could also change it and put baby shower. Uh, please join us for a wedding, like anything. 
it's pretty simple. It's kind of different steps. You need to put what the card is for, who you're celebrating. So it could be one person, two people, a family. And then down here is going to be the information of where the event is going to take place. So I used Bentham, so I'm going to go back and use Bentham. I would recommend to use only one or two fonts for a card. You don't want to make it too messy and use a bunch of fonts. Um, oh, I probably made that too large. And so you're going to start with the day. I'm going to say Saturday. And then just make up a date. So bridal shower, let's pretend it's in spring, let's say March. And 20th, 2020. I don't even know if that is an actual Saturday. That might bother someone. Let me check. Is it going to show me? That might not even be a Saturday. Let's see. It is not. It is the 21st. So we'll just change that to 21st. And then these are all editable. So these are just the people that buy them know that these are things that they're going to customize themselves later on. So it's not a huge deal if it says something, they're just going to end up customizing it when they buy it. So we have the date, we can put the time, say at 1 p.m. And then, and you can put these all in one. That might make it simpler. So I might just put it all in the same one. Now I'm going to put where the location is. So I usually just make up like a, a house address or a restaurant. Let's put like Brickstone Avenue, 22 Anderson Road, or maybe that. No, that's, does that make sense? There's two streets. So let's say it's 22 Brickstone Ave. And then I'll put the city. I'll just put okay. And then we have the date and the place. I want to make that a little bit bigger. And down here, I'm probably going to use another angel heart. We're going to put the RSVP. And I don't like the way that looks, RSVP. Okay, that doesn't look good to me, so I'm gonna delete that, I'm gonna use Bent them again. And then we can put someone's name. So RSVP to like Caroline. And then we put the phone number. So we just make up a phone number zero one two. five, six, seven, eight, nine. So they know that this is going to change. This is just an example. So then I like to kind of adjust where I put the text. 
and I might move these again. Okay, so now we're when I kind of know how much space the text is going to take, I can go back to my images. And before I do that, I'm going to press this little lock button for all of the text. And we're going to talk about the locks again before we save everything. Um, because when you lock it, um, you can't move anything, which is good when you're kind of adjusting the images. But before you save it and upload it to your website, you need to unlock the text and the images that you are wanting the customer to be able to edit. So let's say you don't want them to change where the pictures are. You just want it to be in one static place. Then you can keep it locked and save it. But if there's anything that they need to edit, such as the name, you're going to want to keep the name unlocked uh, once you upload it to Etsy because otherwise they won't be able to change the name. So now I have my clip art up here. I just dragged it over and this little circle up here, it's a white circle. You can use it to rotate. So what I'm going to do is I want to make it so that I can have it on two corners and it's not going to show everything. Or maybe I'll put, I'll just put it on the bottom. Or maybe I'll put it up here. I should have decided that earlier. Maybe I'll put it in the middle. Okay, so this is just a simple, I kind of wanted it to be like one. I'll probably have to move the text a bit. But so everything that is above the gray dotted line will not be shown. Pretty much it's just that extra part that you can, you can cut, it's that bleed line. So I'll probably put one right there. And then I want to keep it the same size. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to click my clip art, make this part gray. I'm going to right click. Oh, actually I'm not going to right click. Up here it shows it duplicate. So I have the same exact size. And then I'm just going to rotate it and put the same one on the bottom. In this corner and then I'll have to adjust the text so I like the way that looks the double check it and see what it would look like without the bleed it's gonna look like that so I might adjust this one a little bit more okay and I actually want to rotate that a little bit Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm going to unlock my fonts. And now I'm going to adjust them. So I might want to make this one just a tiny bit smaller. Oops. Let's lock. Uh, the clip art so it doesn't move and then I'm going to move my fonts. I can even make Jennifer Jones this one a bit bigger. Okay, I'm going to move this one up a bit and I think it's too long, so I'm going to just make that down here at 1 p.m. There, so now it doesn't get in the way. And I'm just going to make this a little bit higher. 
Okay, so this is what it looks like. This is my finished card. And let's take a look at this again. So if I don't want them to, if I don't want the customers to be able to move the clip art, I'm just going to keep those locked and then make sure that all of the text is unlocked so that they can edit it as they'd like. Okay, so this is my card. I'm going to go to info and we'll look a bit, we'll look at that a little bit. So the saving and printing options, this is the default that it's at. It's at JPEG and PDF. So when the customer gets the link and they open it up and they edit it, when they go to print it or download and print, then it gives them the option of printing it as a JPEG. So it's going to be one individual file or a PDF. And the PDF gives them an option to print it as two per page, I believe, or one per page. And a flattened PDF, uh, that just means that everything is going to be on one layer uh, when they um, print and download that. I'm allowing it so that my customer can print the design, that they can edit it after completing, and that the bleed can be shown in download options. So if they would like to have the bleed for their printing purposes, then that will show up there. So 300 PPI, um, that's the uh, pixels per inches, and we want it to be 300. So that's gonna be a really good print quality. Five by seven is a standard card size. Four by six is also one, but I make mine all at five by seven. And I allow my customers to download the cards as many times as they'd like. So I just put unlimited. They can change the background color. They can duplicate, add new text boxes, upload their own images. They can do whatever they want pretty much. But if you don't want these, you can change them. Now for this part listing. So I'm gonna show you really quick just it's not exactly how I do it, but I'm going to show you how to kind of link it with your Etsy. So let's go to download. I'm just going to download one JPEG file of this card. And then I'm just going to show you a quick way to list them. And it's not how I would typically create my listing. So. I usually do some mock-ups, which I can make. I can make a video later on about how I create actual card mock-ups. But so, so you're not going to actually want to use the card as is. You're going to want to put it in a mock-up frame of the card and then list it. It's just not showing up well. But just for the purpose of this video, I'll just make it really quickly. So I'm just going to say floral invite. I did, it's a finished product, I made to order, and then also uh, when you're adding the photos, you're going to want to add some, and if you're using Cordial, you're going to want to add some information about how to use Cordial in those. So uh, okay, maybe I'll actually be a little bit more detailed with this. Okay, so I'm actually going to show you how I make uh, my mockups. And I just went ahead and opened up my JPEG in Photoshop and a card mockup that I'm going to use. So I'm going to click on the blank one. I'm going to grab my JPEG and drag it onto the card, position it and save. And then it is there in my mock-up. And normally I would do a little bit more with the mock-ups. I would, for Etsy, you probably want the mock-up to be a lot larger, so it's gonna be a clearer picture. But I'm just going to save it like this so that you can see what it would look like. So open that up. And Mm -hmm. 
and then I like to put these. Okay. Okay. So we've uploaded our card mockup. We uploaded uh, how it works through Cordial and instant download kind of disclaimer so that people know that this is only a digital file. I'm not sending out any physical prints. So I did, let's put invitations. The invitation is bridal shower. And I'm just gonna put the season as spring digital. So the brief overview, I have a whole little write-up, but I don't have it right now. So digital invite, editable through cordial, no physical prints will be mailed. Just make sure they really know that. Size is five by seven. And then I'll show you what the demo link is and then there's more information that you need to put but just to be brief that's the idea let's just put seven dollars and then for upload i just like to upload some quick start instructions that cordial gives to you to kind of give to them. So let's oh, publish it. It costs 20 cents to publish, but it's worth it They when they sell. Okay, so we have that. Let's go back and click the floral invite. Now what you're going to do is once you publish it, like how you integrate it with cordial, how you actually link it with that listing, is you go up here to the published listing, you grab the URL and I think you only need to copy that number. So those that number right here is how you're going to link this listing with the actual design. So I'm going to go back here when we were in the design, go to info down here it says listings none set. The way you set it is you paste that number here and save. And we're not done yet. We actually have to go to listings, sales channel, none. So this is the one that we have just made. And then this is the card that we just made. It's that floral card. Why isn't it saving like that? Hold on. Hold on. I think I have to save this first. And then make sure that that, yeah, it's still attached. Now go to listings. It's going to pop it up sales channels this is how you can check whether your listings are actually attached to your website so I click on oops click on none this one is not hooked up to any of them I don't know why it's showing like that yeah there we go so this was that number that you attached and then just paste that number one more time and then before you save it Press this little clipboard, copy URL to clipboard. You're going to copy that demo link and now you're going to save it. And so now that floral design has been saved. You're going to go back to your listing and you're going to paste the demo link oops, onto your listing so that when customers look at it, they can end up copying the demo link and then testing it out before they buy it. And then you save, you publish it and save. And 
that's how you do it. So I'm just going to really quick show you that demo link. This is what a customer would see. So they've, let's say they're checking out your listing, they click on the demo link, they open it up in a browser, and then as you remember, they're not able to move the pictures, I've locked them, but they can change all of the text. So let's say they wanna test it out and see what it looks like if it says Sarah, Sarah, Okay. They can change it, they can change the phone number, okay. they can change the dates and times, and then this is what they would see. Uh, the only thing is it wouldn't let them, there's like not as much that they can customize with the demo and they can't download it or print it, but they just get an idea of what they can move around and look at. And then they can buy it directly. So that is how you create it. Let's go back. And that is how I use my clip art or clip art that I have purchased with a commercial license to create my greeting cards and link them through to my Etsy account. So I hope that you enjoyed the video and that the video was helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, uh, let me know in the comments below. Um, there are definitely other ways that I uh, sell um, my artwork and designs and how I make passive income. And I'd like to make more videos kind of showcasing that. All right, so thank you so much for watching. Uh, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for uh, more tutorials and videos like this. All right, thank you.